devices to vibrate. Will all non-council employees, non-council employees, please leave the main floor of the chambers. There is additional seating upstairs in the chambers. Madam Public Advocate. Quiet in the chambers, please. Please close the doors. Everyone, please be seated. Those in the rostrum, please have a seat. Please find a seat. All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Adams. To the next Attorney General of the State of New York, I say congratulations, I told you so, and I. Thank you. Here. Thank you. Amprey Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Present. Borelli. Here. Thank you. Brannon. Here. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Here. Cohen. Constantinides. Present. Cornegie. Deutsch. Diaz. Drum. Espinal. Eugene. Present. Gibson. I'm here. Jonai. Present. Gradenchik. Holden. Kalos. King. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Lanceman. Lander. Here. Levin. Here. Levine. Mizell. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. Moya. Perkins. May, may I be excused to explain my vote? Oh, present. Thank you. <laughs> Powers. Here. Reynoso. Aye. Richards. Present. Grudenchik. Rivera. Here. Rodriguez. Here. Rose. Here. Rosenthal. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Still here. Ballone. Here. Van Bramer. Mizell. Williams. Sadly, still here. <laughs> Jaeger. Here. Matteo, Combo, present. Speaker Johnson, Here. quiet in the chambers, please. All rise for the invocation. All rise. The invocation will be delivered by Pastor Ann T. Meyer. Uh, the pastor, Ann, is the pastor of Trinity Lower East Side Lutheran Church located at 602 East 9th Street in the borough of Manhattan. Quiet in the chambers. This invocation is inspired by one of my favorite writers, Annie Lamont, who says her favorite prayer is help me, help me, help me, and thank you, thank you, thank you. Let us pray. 
We, ta- we pray today saying, help me, help me, help me, help us. Help these elected officials who gather in this place to take on the awesome responsibility of governance. Help them to govern with justice, peace, joy, and open hearts. Help me, help me, help me, help us to have open eyes to always see those in need in our city, the homeless, the hungry, those who struggle with physical or mental illness. Help us to seek systems of support that honor people's integrity and recognize their strength in the face of life's challenges. Help me, help me, help me, help us to listen with open ears to all survivors of sexual harassment and assault. Help me, help me, help me, help us to seek answers that lift up all people in our city, regardless of race, age, sexual orientation, identity or gender, physical ability, immigration or economic status. Help us empower all people in our city, honoring the great diversity of this community, recognizing the value of difference to enhance the whole community. Help me, help me, help me, help us to follow your ways, respect all life and all creation. Thank you, thank you, thank you, God, for those who stepped forward and ran for office, for those who voted and called forth leaders, for those who work besides our elected leaders to support their service. Thank you, thank you, thank you, God for all in this place, that they, will be, that they will call upon your goodness, call for your help, value all in the city so that we may be a shining light on a hill, showing forth justice and love to all the world. Help me, help me, help me, help us. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A motion to spread the invocation. Council Member Rivera. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate, for the opportunity to spread this invocation upon the record. And before I do... Excuse me, Council Member. May we have quiet in the chambers, please? Shh. Council Member Rivera has the floor. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. I want to thank uh, Pastor Rand for that beautiful invocation. Anne and the Trinity Lower East Side Lutheran Parish epitomize the selflessness, dedication, and activism that the Lower East Side is proudly known for. Pastor Anne has been a dedicated leader in New York City for years, serving as a specialized minister in disaster response in our city following the September 11th attacks and in a number of churches and religious organizations throughout the five boroughs in the years since. She has used her position in the community to highlight important issues including mass incarceration, domestic violence, human trafficking, poverty, and language inclusivity. Anne and the staff of Trinity Lower East Side Lutheran Parish have worked for 175 years on the Lower East Side to provide a community for those who face persecution and to fight for those less fortunate, whether it is our brothers and sisters in the LGBTQ community or the poor and the hungry. Trinity Services and Food for the Homeless program is a pioneering food program that serves up to 300 people every single day and highlights the struggle that so many New Yorkers face today with rapidly increasing gentrification and the cost of living. They are always there for the people of the city and one of, were one of the first houses of worship that I noticed in this troubling political climate to proudly hang a banner outside their parish that said, immigrants are welcomed here. So thank you, Pastor Ann, again. And with that, thank you for your words and service. And I motion to spread the invocation in full upon the record. So moved. Thank you. Adoption of minutes, Council Member Cabrera. Motion that the minutes of the stated meeting of August 8, 2018 be adopted. Thank you. Messages and papers from the mayor. Preconsidered M100, submitting Sarah Carroll for appointment to the Landmarks Preservation Commission. Uh, rules, privileges, and elections. M, excuse me, M101, the mayor's management report. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. None. 
Petitions and communications? None. Land use call-ups? M102 and M103. Uh, coupled on a uh, call-up vote, at this time I would ask for a roll call vote on all of today's land use call-ups. Quiet in the chambers. Adams. Aye on all. Ampri Samuel. Aye on all. Ayala. Aye on all. Barron. Aye. Borelli. Aye. Brannon. Aye. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. Aye on all. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. Aye on all. Carnegie. Deutsch. Aye. Diaz. Permission to explain my vote? Uh, after listening to the pastor invocation, Pastor Ann Trainer, I would like to join that invocation by stating that this is a progressive city, which even though I'm not progressive, but the majority of my colleagues are progressive. And when we vote for introduction 959A and 969A, that is not progressive. And we should listen to the words of Pastor Ann Cheney, help me, help me, help me, help others. So that's why I'm voting no on those uh, yes and all except those two. Thank you. And council member, on the land use call-ups, how do you vote? On the two yes, land no use call-ups? Yes or no. Thank you. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Eugene. I would like to ask permission to vote on all the land use call up and all the items in today's agenda. Yes. And I want to vote aye and all. Thank you. Gibson. I vote aye. Joan aye. I also request to vote on the land use and all general orders, and I vote aye on all. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Gordenchik. Aye. Thank you. Holden. Aye. Kalos. Aye. King. Ku. Aye. Kozlowitz. Aye. Lansman. Aye. Lander. Aye. Levin. Aye. Levine. Aye. Mizell. Yes. Menchaca. Aye on all. Miller. I don't know, except for 151, if you're abstaining. Okay. Council member, are you voting on the land use call-ups? We're at the land use call-ups. So vote on strictly the land use call-ups. Aye. Thank you. Carnegie. Aye. Yes. <laughs> Moya. Aye. Perkins. Powers. Aye. Reynoso. I vote aye on all. Richards. Aye. Rivera. Aye. Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Rose. Aye. Rosenthal. Aye on all. Salamanca. I vote aye on all. Land use call ups, and with permission, I would like to vote aye on all. All items on the general order calendar and all resolutions? Yes. Thank you. Torres. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. Yes. Valone. Van Bramer. Aye on all. Williams. Williams. Aye. Jaeger. Aye. Matteo. Combo. Aye. Speaker Johnson. <clears throat> Today's land use call-ups are adopted by a vote of 47 in the affirmative, zero in the neg negative. Quiet in the chambers as we now hear from the speaker, Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, good afternoon. Before I get to my uh, prepared remarks today, uh, Madam Public Advocate, shh. Madam Public Advocate, and Councilman Williams, 
Today is not a political occasion, it's a governmental occasion, but I want to just uh, really let you both know that I think I speak on behalf of all of the members here and the staff and people who have had the opportunity to work with you in the City Council and in the Public Advocate's Office. We are all so incredibly proud by the history that you all achieved a couple of weeks ago, and I wanted to really tell you how grateful we are for your service and for your courage and for everything that you all have done, and we look forward to supporting you and continuing to watch you in the spirit <clears throat> of advocacy and service of how you've served our great city and state. So I want to thank both of you for everything that you all have done. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. So first, I want to extend I want to extend my best wishes to my Jewish colleagues and to all Jewish New Yorkers on a wonderful holiday season. I hope each and every one of you had a safe and blessed Yom Kippur and are having a safe and blessed Sukkot. <clears throat> now I would like to remember John Elgis a retired FDNY firefighter who succumbed to 9-11 related cancer. He was only 60 years old. John was cited three times for bravery throughout his career. And a loving family man who leaves behind his wife, four children, and six grandchildren with another grandchild on the way. Our thoughts and prayers are with John's wife, Naula, their children and grandchildren, and John's FDNY family. Let us take a moment of silence in John's honor, if everyone could please rise. All rise. Thank you very much. Thank you. We are also losing a, a dear member of the council staff this week, uh, Tiffany Townsend. Uh, Tiffany is a rock star and has become a vital member of our team here at the council. Tiffany's next step in her career will be at the Brooklyn Navy Yard, where she will serve. She will serve as vice president of external affairs at the Navy Yard. We wish Tiffany best of luck in her endeavors, and we will miss her. If we could please give Tiffany a big round of applause. She's in the back of the room. <clears throat> so jumping into our docket for the day, the council will vote on one Article 11 property tax exemption at the following location, Lakeview Apartments, which is in the borough of Manhattan. The purpose of this exemption located in Councilmember Bill Perkins' district is to preserve 446 units of affordable housing. I want to thank Rebecca Chasen from the Finance Division for her work on that. The Council will vote on the following land use items. The Central Harlem Historic District in Manhattan. The Council will vote to affirm the designation of the Central Harlem West 130th to 132nd Street Historic District in Councilmember Perkins' district, which consists of approximately 164 properties, primarily row houses, with a handful of apartment institutional buildings located on the mid-blocks of West 130th, West 131st, and West 132nd Streets between Lenox and 7th Avenue. 
We're going to be voting on uh, a, a, a rezoning or a modification in uh, Councilmember Menchaca's district. It's the NYPD evidence storage in Erie Basin. The council will vote with modifications to approve the site selection of Erie Basin on the Red Hook waterfront in Councilmember Menchaca's district to enable the NYPD vehicle storage facility to continue to locate on the site for a maximum of 10 more years. I know that the council member worked very hard to make sure that the NYPD could carry out its critical work while simultaneously creating a process for finding it a long-term home in the future. And I want to thank him for his uh, very hard work and uh, really honest work with the NYPD in getting through this process. I know that it wasn't easy. We're going to be voting on 640 and 644 Riverside Drive in Manhattan. These are two Article 11 property tax exemptions in Council Marie Levine's district to facilitate the preservation of 226 units of affordable housing. We'll be voting on 80 Flatbush Avenue in Brooklyn. The Council will vote to approve with modifications the 80 Flatbush Avenue project in Council Member Steve Levin's district. Council Member Levin successfully pushed for reductions in heightened density of the proposal and important changes to the design. These modifications will be made while maintaining the promised two schools, two new schools, and approximately 200 units of affordable housing. I know this was a difficult, contentious, arduous process uh, for Steve, so I want to thank him and congratulate him on getting this done at the finish line. I know it was very complicated, so congratulations, Steve. We'll be voting on 205 Park Avenue in Brooklyn. The council will vote to approve with modifications the 205 Park Avenue rezoning in Majority Leader Lori Cumbo's district. The rezoning will facilitate the development of an eight-story mixed-use building with 79 units, including up to 20 affordable units pursuant to mandatory inclusionary housing option one and the deep affordability option. We'll be voting on a rezoning at 57 Caton Place in Brooklyn. The council will be voting to approve an application to facilitate the development of a nine-story mixed-use building with 107 residential units, including 27 affordable units at 57 Caton Place in Councilmember Brad Landers District. We'll be voting on 1881 and 1883 McDonald Avenue in Brooklyn. Uh, this is to approve the McDonald Avenue rezoning, facilitating the development of an eight-story mixed-use building with with 35 units, including 11 affordable units in Councilmember Kalman Yeager's district. We'll be voting on an application at 27 East 4th Street. On this application, we'll be voting to disapprove disapprove the 27 East 4th Street application in Councilmember Carlina Rivera's district. The applicant was seeking a zoning text amendment for a special permit under 74 uh, 712 of the zoning code to make the site eligible for a special permit and seeking two additional special permits allowing a transient hotel and retail use and to modify bulk regulations. Our view is that the text amendment and the special permits are not appropriate for reasons that were articulated in detail at the subcommittee and at the committee vote. I know that the council member looks forward to continuing to work with her local community and the development team to see if an alternative is possible. We'll be voting on the Victory Boulevard rezoning on Staten Island. We'll vote uh, to approve with modifications the Victory Boulevard rezoning in uh, Minority Leader Steve Matteo's district. The rezoning would allow for the applicant to expand its existing automotive repair facility. Our modification at the council will ensure that the neighboring residences are not adversely affected by the non-residential uses, including illuminated advertising signs. And I know that this was a complicated and not an easy negotiation, so congratulations, Steve, on getting it done. We'll be voting on the O'Neill's rezoning in Queens. Uh, the council will vote to approve the O'Neill's rezoning to allow for a second floor enlargement to a neighborhood establishment in Council Member Bob Holden's district. We'll be voting on HK Kitchen on sta uh, HK Kitchen in the Bronx. Uh, this is a sidewalk cafe in Council Member Mark Jonai's district. The applicant has agreed to reduce the number of tables and chairs. That is a lot of land use 
and a lot of the staff of the council were very hard on this. I want to thank Brian Paul, Jeff Yoon, John Douglas, Chelsea Kelly, Amy Leviton, Julie Lubin, and the director of land use, uh, Raju Mann, as well as uh, my chief of staff, Jason Goldman, for all of his help on all of these items. Uh, moving on, the council will vote on the following pieces of legislation. Introduction 713A, sponsored by Council Member Jimmy Van Bramer, will require that prominent signage uh, within all runaway homeless youth services funded by the Department of Youth and Community Development will uh, have a 24-hour uh, call-in line uh, for questions and comments or complaints regarding RHY services. I want to thank the staff that worked on this, Paul Senegal, Kevin Katowski, Smita Deshmu, and Andrea Vasquez. We'll also vote on two education bills sponsored by our Education Committee Chair, Mark Traeger. Introduction 561A will require the Department of Education to submit annual reports to the City Council regarding the income and expenditures for parent and parent-teacher associations. The data will be disaggregated by school district and by school, and the report will be posted on the Department of Education's website. Introduction 762A will require that the Department of Citywide Administrative Services, DCAS, to annually provide the Department of Education with materials related to civil service examinations and require DOE to provide such materials to graduating seniors. Uh, I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Beth Gollum, uh, Kalima Johnson, Jan Atwell, Smita Deshmukh, and Andrea Vasquez. Next, in recognition of Climate Week this week, we will vote on several environmental protection bills sponsored by Environmental Protection Committee Chair Costa Constantinides. Introduction 628A would require the city to create a map of, of areas in the city that are most vulnerable to flooding due to the anticipated impacts of climate change and sea level rise. Introduction 749A will require the development of a pilot program in Southeast Queens to use dewatering discharge as a means of heating and cooling buildings. And lastly, Introduction 750A would require that the New York City Jamaica Bay Task Force to provide advice and recommendations to the city regarding the cleanup of Jamaica Bay and Jamaica Bay resiliency. I want to thank the staff who worked on this package of bills, Samara Swanston, Nadia Johnson, Jonathan Seltzer, Megan Chen, and Tirza Nasser. We'll also be voting on Introduction 735A, sponsored by Standards and Ethics uh, Committee Chair and Minority Leader Stephen Matteo. The bill would require the Conflict of Interest Board to report on and initiate rulemaking for advisory opinions that have interpretive value in construing the provisions of the conflicts of interest law and that meet certain criteria. It also requires the inclusion of certain informative statements in future advisory opinions. I want to thank the staff that worked on this bill, Brad Reed, Elizabeth Cronk, Rob Newman, uh, Kenneth Grace, and Serena Longley. Next, the council will vote on legislation regulating uh, vending zones. Introduction 959A, sponsored by Councilmember Margaret Chin, would extend the vending exclusion zone around the World Trade Center to encapsulate security points. Margaret, I want to thank you. I think you have done an incredible job on this. You've spent an enormous amount of time. You have been thoughtful. You have been pragmatic. You have been sensitive to concerns that were raised to you. You did not allow a full expansion of the perimeter zone. And so I am extraordinarily grateful for the hard work that you have put on this. And I wholeheartedly support this bill before us today. I. I also, we also are going to be hearing introduction, voting on introduction 969A, sponsored by Councilmember Peter Koo, which would extend the restricted hours that food vendors can vend on certain streets within Flushing. Peter, similarly, I want to thank you for your approach to this. You've worked on this for a very, very long time, and uh, I'm grateful that we got to today. And I just want to say that you and Margaret are people who are immigrants yourself to this country and people that have always stood for immigrants in this country. And I know that you are doing this for the right reasons and I look forward to supporting both of you today. I wanna to thank the staff that worked on these bills. Uh, Leah uh, Skrupiak, I apologize if I mispronounce your name, Leah. Balkis Mirig and Rachel Cordero. Finally, we'll vote on two bills strengthening regulations of the sightseeing bus industry. My bill, Introduction 723A, would authorize the Department of Transportation to approve pickup and drop-off spots before a company receives or renews their license to operate. 
DOT will consider issues related to congestion, public safety, and community input when approving stops for these tourist buses. Introduction 727A, sponsored by our Consumer Affairs and Businesses Licensing Committee Chair, Rafael Espinal, would expand licensing requirements for sightseeing bus companies. Sightseeing bus drivers must meet basic requirements, such as not having accumulated nine or more points on their driving record within an 18-month period, not having their license suspended or revoked, and not being convicted of an alcohol or drug-related offense over the past three years. I want to thank uh, the same staff, Leah Balkis and Rachel, uh, for their work on that package of bills. That concludes our agenda for today's stated meeting, and I look forward to proceeding with today's votes. Thank you very much, Madam Public Advocate. Thank you. Uh, discussion of general orders. General orders. Councilmember Munchaka. Thank you, Public Advocate, and I also want to extend my congratulations, felicidades to you and your incredible win. Uh, I'm speaking today on general orders uh, on intro 959 and 969. Uh, these are the two vendor bills that were discussed in the general orders. These are not, and I want to make it very clear, these are not land use items. Land use items are things that we have a kind of general understanding that local council members kind of move forward and we kind of go with them. These are not land use items. I have some issues with these bills and I'll be voting no on those two during my voting. but. Street vendors are a vital part of the city. They feed us and bring products to us and with culture and so much vibrancy. And both of these bills, I think, fall short of the real opportunity for us to build relationships with an immigrant community that is being often attacked. I think that we have more time to be able, we, we need more time to be able to build a better set of bills and that the concepts around public safety and congestion just do not meet the standard of protecting the economic viability of the street vendors. They were outside, we spoke to them. And so we can do both public safety congestion issues and protecting the viability. I don't know if there are any plans, and I'm hoping to hear from the council members today about those plans of those street vendors that today you will be voting to evict them from the spaces that some of them have been there for 30 years. This is not easy. Uh, colleagues. And so I ask for more time to vote no on these bills so they can go back to committee so we can get a better opportunity for everyone. Uh, these are vulnerable communities that we are impacting today. And so with those concerns and those, this opportunity that we have today to keep working on them and that this is not a land use item that has tradition, I ask you to vote no on both 959, 969 or abstain on the vote. Uh, because you are going to be impacting the livelihoods of uh, Marta, uh, of Nicholas, and Mokhtar today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Council Member Constantinides. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Uh, I rise today to ask my colleagues to support a package of bills that will help secure the future of Jamaica Bay and the surrounding waterways and communities. These bills will help set Southeast Queens and other er areas on a more sustainable course. The first bill, intro four, uh, 749, will direct the city to study the groundwater pumping facilities used across Southeast Queens, such as the systems used at York College or that pumps out 100,000 gallons per day, or Junior High School P uh, 8 in Jamaica uh, that pumps 24 hours a day, uh, to see if the water can be used for heating and cooling in a geothermal exchange system. As the groundwater table seeps ever upward, these city facilities must spend more and more on pumping out water from their basements and into sewers, and less on educating the next generation of New Yorkers. This study will determine if the water can instead be put to a more beneficial use that allows these buildings to transition away from boilers that burn dirty fuel oil and other fossil fuels to renewable energy. The second bill will help reestablish a fiscal task force for the cleanup and maintenance of Jamaica Bay. Until 2013, uh, that when it was abolished by Mayor Bloomberg, the Jamaica Bay Task Force worked with stakeholders around the city, state, and federal agencies, and experts from a number of different fields to determine the best outcome for the space ecosystem. Many of these great activists are still meeting today. Uh, today, we are just going to help reestablish that committee in order to help fight climate change, loss of marshland, pollution from JFK, wastewater treatment plants, and other challenges. Uh, the third bill, 
help applies more generally to the city as a whole, um, but it will also look at climate change in a way of our flooding. We know sea level is going to rise. Uh, we know climate change is affecting New York City. Uh, we have to be proactive rather than reactive. Uh, areas that were once thought of hundreds or thousand-year flood zones are now flooding with regularity. I, w I, w I will wrap up. I want to thank my colleagues, uh, Councilmember Donovan Richards, Nick Miller, Adrian Adams, for their great support on these bills and helping me tour uh, York College and Junior High School 8. Uh, Nadia, uh, Swanston, uh, Samara Swanston, Nadia Johnson on the committee staff, the Mundy family for all of their great work and advocacy around Jamaica Bay, uh, Manny Kaufman and Archie Spigner as well, and of course our speaker, Corey Johnson, for his strong environmental leadership, not only during Climate Week, but throughout our entire year. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Chin. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. It's great to see you there again. <laughs> um, today we are voting on Intro 959A, a bill that would help ensure safety for the growing number of residents and pedestrians in and around the World Trade Center site. There's no question that the streetscape around the World Trade Center is unique, with the area becoming more heavily utilized important security infrastructure, including ballers, security credentialing, kiosks, and vehicle checkpoints has been installed to adjust for the reality of a newly revitalized site. By pursuing a limited expansion of the no vending zone to include these security points, this legislation would create a buffer to prevent crowds and any other obstructions from blocking the sight lines. This bill achieved two goals, ensuring safety for a growing number of residents, workers, and visitors while minimizing impact on surrounding street vendors. Before and after the hearing, I'm proud to have successfully advocated to keep places like Sakati Park and many more areas open for vending. I also want to thank all the World Trade Center street vendors who have met with my office and promised to work with us as we advocate for opportunities for them to continue to make a living and build their customer base here. I want to thank our speaker uh, for his support and the council staff and especially Rachel Cordero and Leah uh, Skipe and my office for their hard work to create a balanced bill that increased safety for those who live, work, and visit the World Trade Center area, as well as acknowledging street vendors' vital role in our downtown community. And I urge my colleague to join me in voting yes on this bill. Thank you. Councilmember Koo. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Today, I'm asking my colleagues to support my Bill 969A uh, as one of the most busy transportation hubs in New York City, the downtown flushing areas bears a unique burden that separates it from other commu uh, communities. Every day, thousands of people compete for its 21 bus lines, the seven train, commuter vans, and long island railroad. All of this space has recently become overrun with sidewalk obstructions. Last year, we widened the sidewalks in hopes of providing more spaces for commuters and residents. Unfortunately, our widened sidewalks has given rise to a massive increase in street vending of all kinds. This legislation looks to return the sidewalks of one of the city's business transportation hubs back to the people. I have no objection to vendors being innovative in order to conduct their business. But I wholeheartedly object to those who do so at the expense of their community. So this bill prohibits vending around downtown area in the daytime and evening hours. We left some streets open so food vendors can still conduct business. And I'm open to discuss the creation of designated vending zone in our community in the future. We first need to address the problem of congestion that exists today. Thank you, Speaker Johnson, Chief of Staff Jason Goldman, Rob Newman, Rachel Cordero, James DiGiovanni, Belchris Mia Rick, Lia School Piat, Andrew Wilbur, 
and Committee Chair Espinal, and my staff. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Van Bramer. Thank you very much. I want to thank uh, the speaker uh, and chair uh, and my neighbor, Debbie Rose, for helping to shepherd uh, this piece of legislation through that hopefully everyone will vote for today. Uh, we all know that runaway and homeless youth uh, are particularly vulnerable, and LGBTQ youth uh, who are uh, or have uh, run away and experienced homelessness are, are particularly vulnerable uh, to exploitation and abuse, even at the facilities that are designed to help them. Uh, the Department of Youth and Community Development uh, issue uh, uh, millions and millions of dollars in contracts, both at shelters and at other service providers. Uh, but it's important for all of the runaway and homeless youth to know that if they are experiencing abuse, if they are being exploited, or if any of the services or programs, uh, including shelters, are not uh, serving them well, they must have a place to turn to. So this will establish uh, a clear uh, and very visible uh, signage alerting them to a 24-hour hotline that they can call to report any problems, any abuse. Uh, they must be heard and they must get the help uh, and the services that they require. It is incredibly important because so much of the work is subcontracted out and not actually performed by a city agency, but instead by private providers. So uh, I'm really proud uh, of this piece of legislation to make sure that we're reaching all of uh, these young people, particularly those who are most vulnerable, uh, and to make sure that all of the service providers are doing the service and helping all of these young people in ways that truly reach them. And if they are not, they know that someone is watching, someone is listening, and if they make a quick phone call, they will get what they need. So with that, I want to thank everyone for helping to make this possible, uh, including my colleagues, uh, and also my chief of staff, Matt Wallace. Thank you. Council Member Traeger. Thank you, public advocate. It's no secret that our PTAs are not as equitable as they should be. And we must do more to make sure all of our students have equal opportunities. There are some schools that have raised more than $1 million, but other schools have to start a GoFundMe page just to raise for basic resources. Your zip code should not determine your number of opportunities. And to be clear, fundraising totals do not equate to engagement, but they do equate to the number of opportunities student students may receive in that school. My bill will require the DOE to report annually regarding the total income and expenditure of, of parent associations and parent-teacher associations at each school in the prior school year. The bill will create transparency, further inform the conversation we're having about inequity in our school system, and help shape policies going forward to ensure all of our city students are getting the same opportunities for the quality education they deserve. I'm proud of my bill, intro 561A, and I ask all of my colleagues for, for their support. In addition to, I have another bill, intro 672A, that will require the DOE to provide, I'm sorry, the DCAS, uh, to provide information to students in our high schools about the civil service exams and, and all the information that goes with it. It's a common sense, no-brainer bill to better inform our students about the future opportunities right here in New York City. I'd like to thank Speaker Corey Johnson, Education Committee staff Beth Golub, Jen Atwell, Kalima Johnson, Caitlin O'Hagan, Elizabeth Hoffman, Laura Popa, Rob Newman, Jeff Baker, Jason Goldman. I'd like to thank my, my staff in my office, Anna Scaife, Vanessa Ogle, and Eric Feinberg. I ask my colleagues to support both bills. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Miller. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. I simply want to uh, congratulate uh, my colleague and thank my colleague, uh, Council Member Constantinides, for the work that he's done in the environmental protection community, particularly around those vulnerable areas of flooding areas throughout our city, and the work he's done on the pilot program in Southeast Queens, a community that has suffered for decades. The work that we have seen um, working with myself and Council Member Adams already, and I know that these bills will make a significant difference. Uh, in particular, uh, as well as Council Member Richards, uh, will make a, a difference in Southeast Queens. I look forward to his passage and working with the Council Member and the Committee on those issues. Thank you. As w I'm sorry, and I'd like to shout out school construction uh, team that is in 
the balcony there, working very hard. Thank you so much. Thank you. Seeing no one else on general orders, report of special committees. None. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing, intros 723A and 727A, sightseeing buses. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intros 959A and 969A, street vendor bills. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Education, intro 561A, parent-teacher associations. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 672A, sur civil service exams in schools. Amended and coupled to general orders. Report of the Committee on Environmental Protection, intros 628A, 749A, and 750A, flooding, dewatering, discharge in Jamaica Bay. Amended and coupled to general orders. Report of the Committee on Finance, preconsidered Reso 537, organization funding. Coupled to general orders. Preconsidered LU 230 and Reso 541, Lakeview Apartments. Coupled to general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, LU 151 and Reso 542, Landmark Designation. Coupled to general orders. LU 175, NYPD Storage. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Rule 11.70B of the Rules of the Council and Section 197D of the New York City Charter. <clears throat> Excuse me, LU 184 and Reso 543 and LU 185 and Reso 544 tax exemptions. Coupled to general orders. LU 192 through LU 194, 80 Flatbush Avenue rezoning. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Rule 11. A point seven zero B of the Rules of the Council and Section 197D of the New York City Charter. LU 199 and Reso 545 and LU 200 and Reso 546, 57 Caton Place rezoning. Coupled to general orders. LU 201 and Reso 547 and LU 202 and Reso 548, McDonald Avenue rezoning. Coupled to general orders. LU 203 and Reso 549 through LU 205 and Reso 551, 27 East 4th Street. A motion to disapprove. LU 206, Victory Boulevard rezoning. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Rule 11.70B of the Rules of the Council and Section 197D of the New York City Charter. LU, LU 207 and Reso 552, O'Neill's rezoning. Coupled to general orders. LU 217 and Reso 553, Sidewalk Cafe. Coupled to general orders. Report of the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections, preconsidered M100 and Reso 554, approving the appointment of Sarah Carroll as a member of the Landmarks Preservation Commission. Coupled to general orders. Report of the Committee on Standards and Ethics, Intro 735A, Conflict of Interest Board. Amended and coupled to general orders. Report of the Committee on Youth Services, Intro 713A, Runaway and Homeless Youth. Amended and coupled to general orders. On the general order calendar, intro 720, site safety training. Laid over. LU 175 and Reso 555 through LU 206 and Reso 560, various rezonings. Coupled to general orders. Resolution appointing various persons, commissioner of deeds. Coupled to general orders. And at this time, I would ask for a roll call vote on all of the items on today's general order calendar. Adams. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. With regard to LU 151, as uh, was stated earlier today, I just want to acknowledge the hard work of my subcommittee on landmarks, public siting, and maritime uses for your very, very hard work in working on the, uh, the Harlem designation, which uh, was very uh, interesting to say the least. Once again, I'd like to personally acknowledge and credit the hard work of numerous stakeholders in Harlem for making their voices heard over many, many years. And the residing community of the 9th District of Manhattan, I say thank you once again for your passionate perseverance in this matter. My colleagues and I welcome the opportunity to get it right, and I will proudly vote aye to support your efforts to maintain the boundaries of the entire Central Harlem Historic District. I vote aye. Thank you. Ampri Samuel. Aye on all. Thank you. Ayala. Aye on all. Barron. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you. Uh, I want to also acknowledge Celeste Morris, the instructor of the program in conjunction with the School Construction Authority, who's here with her students in the Advanced Mentor Program and Public Policy Module. Regarding the legislation, I also want to add my comments to the great work that was done by the community of Harlem to say that the action that had been taken by the subcommittee was not in keeping with what most of that community wanted. And I want to commend them for making sure that they were engaged in this process to have it done 
in its entirety. I'm voting aye on all with the exception of LU 190 through 194 and LU 199 through 202. And it's the same speech that I generally make when I vote no on these land use items. I don't think that as we are approving projects that have 25 and 30 percent of what's designed for people at 60 and 80 percent, leaving 70 to 80 percent at market rate is addressing the issue of providing housing for those in the greatest need. So for that reason, I'm voting no against those bills that I've cited, as well as intro 959A and 969A. I do believe that vendors, if this bill passes, will be greatly harmed. And I understand from one of the sponsors that there will be efforts made to lift the cap. I think perhaps if we had lifted the cap first, there might have been a better opportunity to be able to move vendors around. Thank you. Thank Mr. You. Clerk, uh, before you move on, I was remiss. I, I wanted to acknowledge that uh, joined with us in the uh, audience today is Assemblymember Michael Blake, who is here, and I want to welcome him to the chambers of the City Council. Uh, thank you for being here, Assemblymember. Borelli. Aye. Brennan. Uh, I vote aye on all with the exception of 959A and 969A. Cabrera. Aye on all. Chin. Aye on all. Cohen. Uh, Madam Public Advocate, permission to explain my vote? Yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, I just want to express, I would not have voted for 959A and 969A except for my my deep belief that we will, as a body, ultimately take up a more comprehensive uh, street vendor uh, reform. Uh, I represent uh, two bids, and I know that there are challenging issues uh, with street vending, but I also know that uh, some of the regulations, particularly pro problems with permitting, uh, really need to be addressed, and so I look forward to addressing those. Uh, and I also want to thank my colleague Mark Traeger for taking the time on 561A, because I also, I'm uh, concerned that that information will be used for good, that uh, I think pulling this one strand out of uh, a complicated formula on school budgets uh, could have the potential of being divisive, uh, but the bill is neutral on its face, and I, I share his con deep concern about uh, inequity in terms of resources in schools. Uh, so despite those reservations and, uh, and, and my deep belief that we are going to ultimately get to a good place on street vending, I'm going to vote aye on all. Thank you. Constantinidis. Aye on all. Carnegie. Aye on all except 959A. Deutsch. Aye on all. Drum. Aye. Diaz. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Madame Chair Lady, I was, supposed, I, was, I was going to explain my vote, but after listening to my colleague Manchaca, I'm going to leave it like that. I think that he explained it so well and so clear that whoever had ears should listen to him. And I'm voting yes on all except uh, 959A and 969A. Thank you very much. And thank you, Councilman Manchaca, for that wonderful explanation. Thank you. Espinal. Espinal. Gibson. I vote aye on all. Grodenchik. Aye. Holden. Aye on all. Kalos. Aye on all. Ku. Aye, aye on all. Kozlowitz. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. Do you request permission to explain? Yes. And uh, congratulations uh, to you. Um, uh, for many of the same reasons that my colleagues are, I feel ambivalent about 959 and 969A. There is room for us to move forward on vending in a way that does provide some places where we restrict, restrict it, but I really believe it will be best done as part of comprehensive legislation that also eases some of the burdens that we have, sets clear standards, 
Um, I do not think we'll be, we'll be, we, excuse me, will be well served if every effort to restrict vending is a piece of legislation on the floor of this council. So I'm going to, but I also have real respect for council members Ku and Chin. I know they have worked hard here. Obviously, they are champions of immigrants, and I respect their work. I'm going to vote no on 969A, and I'm going to abstain on 959A, where I appreciate the work that Council Member Chin has done to pull back the boundaries and the work that Jason Goldman has done and uh, commits to continue doing to make sure those 16 vendors that are being displaced find good places in lower Manhattan where they can continue to do business so we can all be uh, proud of what we're doing here today. I also want to give props to Steve Levin on the, his work at 80 Flatbush. He is up against it on a lot of projects, and he is working hard to find solutions that work for the broader goals of the city as well as of his district. And I want to thank my colleagues for voting in favor of the application of 57 Caton Place where we're getting a couple of dozen new affordable units in the Kensington community, which has never had any affordable housing before, uh, and also taking significant steps forward to preserve Kensington Stables, the home of the horses that are the last riding uh, in Prospect Park and in Brooklyn. I won't go into details about what we're getting done there, but uh, good things are happening, and I appreciate your vote in favor. I vote aye on all except no on 969A and abstain on 959A. Thank you. Espinal. I vote aye. Levin. Commissioner, explain my vote? Yes. Thank you very much, Madam Public Advocate. Um, I just wanted to uh, thank my colleagues for their support on, uh, on the 80 Flatbush project. And for those that are voting, no, I understand and respect their, um, their, their vote and opinions. Um, uh, this was a long process. Um, and um, we went through a rigorous process uh, to get to an outcome that I think was uh, in the best interest of the community. Um, what, where we landed uh, was now the project is going to be reduced from an 18 FAR building uh, or a set of buildings to a 15.75 FAR building, which translates to roughly about 137,000 square feet. So it's a significant reduction um, while maintaining all of the benefits that were uh, initially committed. So roughly or approximately 200 units of affordable housing, uh, a new school for Khalil Gibran International Academy, and a new elementary school um, that will serve uh, approximately 350 students. Um, it, it was our preference to try to get the building to under 15 FAR, um, but unfortunately that wasn't possible. But we do believe that it was, uh, it was, we negotiated about as far as it could go while still maintaining a viable project. Um, and so I want to thank um, the applicant, Alloy, uh, the education constru Educational Construction Fund, Jennifer Maldonado, um, our land use staff, our chief of staff, Jason Goldman, um, uh, Raju Mann, Brian Paul, Amy Levitan, Julie Lubin, who worked very tirelessly on this. And uh, I want to especially thank, um, uh, and as, as well as the administration, and especially Deputy Mayor Alicia Glenn, who uh, worked personally on this. And I want to thank the community who really had their voice uh, 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 in this process and made their voices heard and had a significant impact. And if it wasn't for the community, the Borum Hill Association, but a lot of other individuals and groups that um, made their voices heard, uh, this project would not have been improved the way that it was. So uh, I want to give um, uh, them the, uh, the shout out that they deserve. And, um, and I do want to vote aye on all with the exception of, um, uh, sorry, two pieces of legislation. Uh, ex sorry, uh, the exception of uh, intros 959A and 969A with uh, great respect to my colleagues, Margaret Chin and Peter Kufer. I know who worked hard on this, but uh, respectfully, I vote no on those two items. Thank you. Thank you. Mario. Aye on all. Thank you. Levine. We're voting aye on all with the exception of intro 969A. Thank you. Maisel. Yes. Menchaca. Madam Public Advocate, permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you. Uh, I am going to be talking about the Erie Basin NYPD evidence storage facility land use item 170, 175. I'm, I'm voting yes on this, and we work really hard to address some of the concerns of the community with the NYPD. This facility is critical to NYPD's ability to store evidence and investigate criminal cases. But this facility also sits on one of the most vulnerable sites in our city, a site that was devastated during Sandy, 
resulting in a significant and costly damage to investigatory evidence. As we know, more storms and floods are coming, and it felt it was irresponsible to allow the city to continue this site and continue not just with a 10-year permit, but in an indefinite amount of ability for them to renew their lease. We said no, and we worked back down to 10 years only, and with that, we are establishing a relocation working group that will ensure that the facility that is so critical to this justice system that we hold so dear find a safe home in the next 10 years. And so I'm hoping that this becomes a citywide conversation and we'll be looking towards you to join this effort, but really coming out of Sunset Park uh, and Red Hook in my district. The original agreement has some maintenance contracts with Valentino Pier, a park that you should visit, it's beautiful, enhancing the public access to the Columbia Street Esplanade and supporting neighborhood-wide planning uh, so that Red Hook can get the attention it needs to further think about its integrated flood protection plan, its growth in manufacturing and residential. Thank you for everyone, NYPD, DCAS, Parks, the Mayor's Office, everyone and the speaker staff for joining in this effort. We found a solution, we worked together. I will be voting yes on all except for intro five, uh, sorry, intro 969 and 959A. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Miller. I don't know. Moya. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Uh, thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Um, while I will be voting uh, aye and all, I just wanted to say that uh, I believe that street vendors uh, play an important role in our community and provide a service that should not be taken for granted. Uh, at the same time, we need to find a balance between street vending, like all industries, and the public safety. Uh, and I appreciate that this is a reflection of my colleagues' districts, uh, and I look forward to working with Council uh, Member Chin and the rest of my colleagues uh, going forward. Thank you. I will be voting aye on all. Perkins. So, uh, I want to vote aye on all except 959A, 969. I very much support the uh, comprehensive street vending reforms and regulations and look forward to being able to be a part of the effort to bring that about. I own all otherwise. Powers. Thank you. Permission to explain my vote. Thank you. I, I want to echo comments made both by uh, my colleagues, Francisco Moya and Andy Cohen. Um, we, I think, in this body have a great appreciation for uh, the many vendors in this city that provide not only just the character and good food, but also it's a, an important job and a, a path to the middle class and higher for many Americans and new Americans. Um, after a lot of conversations with my colleagues and, and folks here, I have a better appreciation for their issues and their districts, and for that reason we'll be voting aye on, on the bills. Um, but understanding what Councilmember Landon other said as well is true, which is that we need to have, I think, a stronger, a stronger framework for how we view all of these rather than doing them sort of spot by spot. So uh, I support that, uh, that framework, uh, building a framework around that as well. Um, second, I just wanted to say thank you to the speaker, thank you to Councilmember King for a resolution on Raise the Age that we're passing today that I introduced to ensure that as we move forward, we also do a review of existing uh, individuals that were previously convicted as 16, 17 year olds in criminal court and examining their cases to make sure that we have uh, uh, equitable treatment for those who are going through a system that we now deem to be inappropriate. And of course, a lot of work to do around raise the age before implementation here, period. Last, I just want to congratulate Councilmember Levin. I know that was a hard fought rezoning and he came to a, a, I think a good place on it. So congratulations to him as well. With, uh, with that being said, I vote aye on all. Thanks. Reynoso. Permission to explain my vote. Congratulations, Tish. Uh, Want to just also state, I think it's very clear here that the city council is asking for more comprehensive uh, planning and reform when it comes to the street vendor issue. Um, and uh, we, we all think that there is a better solution to this. 
um, in a more thoughtful way. Um, but I also do think that the work that Margaret Chen and Peter Ku have done related to uh, street vendors in their district is, is second to none. They've been very open-minded. They've been listening to all of our concerns. This is their districts. They understand those districts very well. Um, so I am going to vote aye on all, including the two bills uh, by Ku and Chin, but hope that in the future the City Council could hear a more comprehensive plan uh, for street vending. So again, I vote aye on all. Richards. Aye on all. Rivera. Aye on all. Rodriguez. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. First of all, congratulations, public advocate. Thank you. So one that my daughter, 11 years old, she said that going around saying that she has a good friend who's going to be AG. So, <laughs> so that's a role model that I know, especially all women, but especially with, with women of color they need as they grow and to see that there is role model that they can follow. It, no one here in this body has more, more, more authority than saying that she's been fighting for immigrants mm -hmm. and street vendors and everyone than my great colleague, Margaret Shane. It, it's difficult to be here where we are because we have the responsibility to balance in the opinion and the interests of everyone. I know, and I've been working with the street vendor coalition for years, and I know that we need to do a reform now. I know that Council Member Chen is leading the effort. As someone that allowed me to carry on the bill, the Small Business Survival Act, something that she did also for the last couple of years, I trust her and her leadership to be sure that with the Speaker of Corey Johnson, we will be able to have a hearing to move a bill to bring the reform that we need to protect the local small businesses but also understanding that a street vendor is part of our city. So with that in mind, knowing that both Council Member Ku and Chen, they are great leaders that stand for everyone, including those men and women that are the street vendor in the street, I'm very proud to be voting I, knowing that we will be working together to bring a street vendor reform in our city. With that, I vote aye. Thank you. Rose. Aye. Rosenthal. With particular appreciation for Council Member Chin, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Torres. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Traeger. Uh, I'm going to abstain on uh, 969959 and aye on the rest. Thank you. Ulrich. Aye on all. Valone. Congratulations, Madam Advocate. There will be no on 561 and aye on all the rest. Thank you. Van Bramer. Permission to briefly explain my vote? Yes. Thank you. I just want to say I have served with uh, Margaret Chin and Peter Ku uh, for nearly nine years, and I uh, really greatly respect both of them and know in their hearts that they are always trying to do what is best for the districts and the people they serve, and I know how deeply both of them care about all immigrants and all workers. So. Uh, I too have great uh, appreciation for the role of street vendors um, in the city, and I know we'll have more to do in the council, but I have great respect and admiration for my colleagues, and it is with that uh, respect for who they are and what they represent and all that they've done that I vote aye on all. Thank you. Williams. May I excuse me my vote? Yes. Thank you. Uh, first, uh, I want to make sure I mention this because I know folks might leave, but I want to say congratulations uh, to the public advocate and thank you uh, for all the support I received from my colleagues both before and after the election. I genuinely appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, on the, these votes, I'm going to be abstaining on land use 192 to 194. I want to lend my uh, combine my uh, comments with that of uh, Councilman Barrett. My hope is that at some point uh, this body will reopen MIH. Uh, I do support the ones that do have uh, option one, although I think uh, that is still not enough. And my hope is that we reopen. Um, on the bills, uh, I don't know, with the exception of intro 959A, 969A, uh, I do want to make sure I mention that I believe, having worked with uh, Council Member Chin, that she deeply cares about these workers and the people that most folks are speaking about when we talk about these um, licenses. Uh, I just happen to disagree with. Um, the uh, 
assumption that this somehow is going to assist in, in safety. So I'm going to have to vote no on intro 959A. I hope we do more uh, comprehensive discussion around uh, the licenses and the vendors. Uh, with Councilman McCool, having worked with him, I know that he's deeply concerned about uh, that particular area and district. Uh, but again, uh, I'm very concerned about uh, the vendors and doing this in piecemeal. But just as a nod to show that I know that uh, congestion is an issue that we have to address, I'm going to abstain on that one and hope that we have a more uh, more full conversation on these issues and not bring these forward piecemeal because there are real people's lives who are depending on us doing this in a, uh, a better way. With that, I will eye on the rest. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Jaeger. Eye on all with the exception of LU-201, LU-202, Resolution 547, Resolution 548. Thank you. Council Member Williams. Council Member Williams, can you please repeat your vote, please, for the record? <clears throat> I on all the uh, I on all with the exception of LU 192194, which I vote against, uh, and I vote against intro 959A. Abstain on 969A. Thank you, Madam President. May I may I clarify my vote? Uh, the four uh, items that I mentioned, I am abstaining on them, not voting no. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Maisel corrects me that the Prospect Park Stables is not the sole stables in Brooklyn. There actually is the Jamaica Bay Stables as well, and I felt bad for Stand corrected. Thank you. Combo. I vote aye. Thank you. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye on all. While we're tallying the votes, uh, I want to uh, let it be known that we've been joined by a very special guest today, uh, one of uh, the greats, as I think Councilor Perkins would agree with us, his amazing partner in life and wife, the wonderful Pam Perkins is here, and I wanted to welcome her to the chambers today. items on today's general order calendar were adopted by a vote of 50 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions, with the exception of 959A, which was adopted by a vote of 40 in the affirmative, eight negative, and two abstentions, and intro 969A, which was adopted by a vote of 40 in the affirmative, eight negative, and two abstentions, um, and land use uh, 192, 193, and 194, with accompanying resolutions, which was adopted by a vote of 48 in the affirmative, two negative, and zero abstentions, and land use 199, 200, with accompanying resolutions, which was adopted by a vote of 49 in the affirmative, one negative, and zero abstentions, and land use 201, 202, with accompanying resolutions, which was adopted by a vote of 48 in the affirmative, one negative, one abstention, and land use 190, 191, with accompanying resolutions, which was adopted by a vote of 49 in the affirmative, one negative, and zero abstentions, and intro 561A, which was adopted by a vote of 49 in the affirmative, one negative, and zero abstention. And there is one correction, which is the revised land use call-up vote is 50 in the affirmative, zero negative. Introduction and reading of bills. All bills have been referred to committees as indicated on the agenda. And now resolution 283, a resolution calling upon the governor. Shh. Quiet in the chambers. Yeah. We're, we're still in session. A resolution calling upon the governor to coordinate a review of cases involving persons convicted of a crime at the age of 16 or 17 years of age before raise the age legislation went into effect, who are currently incarcerated or are sentenced in criminal court to ensure those sentences are equitable and just. We will hear from the sponsor of that resolution, Council Member Keith Powers. Thank you. I mentioned it quickly, so I'll just keep it short. It's, it's a resolution just to ensure that as we move into Raise the Age implementation on October 1st, that we ask the governor and the state to look at those who have already been convicted as 16 and 17 year olds and review their cases because they were, we are now deeming this to be an inappropriate uh, way to treat 16 and 17 year olds, get them off of the uh, Rikers Island, but also uh, don't treat them at, in, in criminal court. So we're asking for a review of those cases of those who were tried as 16 and 17 year olds to ensure that they also get fair treatment as well. And I thank you for the consideration thank of it. Thanks. Any other speakers on the resolution? Seeing none, all of those in favor say aye. 
All of those opposed? Any abstention? The ayes have it. And now to general discussion, beginning with Council Member Barron. Uh, thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Uh, yesterday, I stood on the steps of City Hall with those who are calling for justice for the family of Mohammed Ba. He was killed by the police, New York City police, September 25th. Yesterday marked the sixth anniversary. The judge, uh, there was a jury trial, and the jury came to a settlement in that regard. The administration has decided that they are going to file an appeal against the settlement that has been awarded by the courts. We are calling on the mayor to withdraw that appeal and let this family move forward so that they can get on with their healing process. And I want to call my colleagues' attention to intro 1114 which I'm introducing with Council Member Jimmy Van Bramer. It's a bill to create a task force to examine the monument, statues, public art, and historical markers in our city-owned property, placing special emphasis on those that are subject to sustained negative attention and may be viewed as inconsistent with the values of diversity, equity, and inclusion. This task force would be chaired by the Commissioner of Cultural Affairs, the Commissioner of the City Planning, Parks, Recreation, and Transportation would also have seats on this task force, as well as the Executive Director of the Landmarks Preservation Commission. The remaining members would be representatives from each of the five boroughs, respectively, and have expertise in one or more of the following areas. Art history, antiquities, public art, public space, preservation, cultural heritage, diversity, and inclusion, and education. I want to acknowledge the following people who worked on drafting this legislation. Alex Washington, legislative attorney. Kelly Taylor, deputy counsel to the speaker. Wesley Jones, deputy director. My legislative director, Indigo Washington, and my chief of staff, Joy Simmons. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Levin. Thank you very much, Madam Public Advocate. Um, I want to, uh, for a moment here, uh, acknowledge uh, the loss of somebody very important to the, uh, the 33rd District and uh, to the New York City Council. Uh, Marion Wood uh, Meyer passed away last week. Marion uh, served the New York City Council as part of uh, the office in the 33rd District, starting with former council member Ken Fisher, uh, and then uh, throughout the entire tenure of council member David Yasky and then uh, uh, with my office um, for several years as well. Marion uh, was born in Texas. She uh, married her husband, Sid Meyer, uh, when she was a psychiatric social worker at Kingsborough Psychiatric Center, formerly known as Brooklyn State Hospital. Uh, Sid was the personnel officer there. Marion was born in Galveston, Texas on July 18, 1944. Her, Don, her father, Donald A. Wood, was stationed there with the United States Army. Her muddy, mother, Betty Jo, uh, also worked for the Army as a nurse, but was discharged when she became pregnant with Marion. Marion's father was a veterinarian in Fredonia, New York, where Marion grew up. Her maternal grandparents were pioneers who came to Lawton in a covered wagon. She received her undergraduate degree from Cornell University and earned a master's degree in social work from from uh, Corn sorry, her undergrad from Cornell and her, ma and her master's in social work from Columbia. Marion is survived by her husband, Sidney uh, Meyer, uh, of 40, husband of 42 years, her son, Michael Wood Meyer, and her five grandchildren, Ryan, Alexander, uh, Jackson, Nate, and Leo. Um, I want to thank you, public advocate, for uh, attending the services for Marion. Um, she was a, an institution in the 33rd District and uh, she'll be missed by many. Thank you. May she rest in peace. Council Member Chin. Thank you. Um, today we're introducing Intro 1116, legislation that would expand the opportunity for street vendors in our city. Many of these vendors are immigrant entrepreneurs looking for a pathway to the middle class and to achieve the American dream. However, for years they have been subject to broken system that does not work for vendors or reflect their vital role in our local economy. 
Enforcement has been spotty and inconsistent. Now is the time that we create fair rules for everyone to follow. I am proud to sponsor legislation that takes an important step in building a city where street vendors, brick and mortar small businesses, and residents can coexist. This legislation will finally raise the long-standing cap on vendor license, food vendor license, create an independent vending enforcement unit to enforce the rules consistently and fairly, and create a street vending advisory board where vendors, small businesses, community groups, and other stakeholders can all be at the table to assess the impact of street vending every year. We need more opportunities for immigrant workers, not less. Under a federal administration intent on breeding fear and silence within immigrant communities, this legislation creates a real chance for the city to be a leader for inclusion and opportunity for immigrants. I'm proud to have been a champion for street vendors since before being elected to the New York City Council. And I thank former Speaker Melissa Mark Rivero for entrusting me and Councilmember Machaca to renew this effort. I hope my colleague will join us to help more New Yorkers achieve the dream of owning their own businesses, lift their families out of poverty, and shape a new narrative for street vendors in our city. And I urge my colleague to sign on. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Rodriguez. I would like to invite everyone here and, and everyone in government, community board, president, and, and everyone throughout the city to join Speaker Johnson and the Committee of Transportation as we go, uh, and also public advocates and many other elected officials as we will be holding our 24 hours Riders Respond Transit Tour. That tour will take place next week, the third and the fourth, from seven in the morning to seven p.m. We're going to be in the subway stations, listening to the rider, and using those information to continue conversation with the MTA to bring the improvement that is needed to take our transportation system to the 21st century. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Williams. Uh, thank you. Uh, first, uh, to the clerk, I don't know if it's possible, but I, I would like to immediately sign on to uh, Councilmember Barron's bill uh, with the Monuments Commission. Um, I also want to allow myself with her comments on uh, Mohammed Ba. I generally try my best uh, to speak up of the reforms that have happened, uh, but there are some unforced errors that are ex inexplicable. Uh, this is one of them. Uh, the administration did not have to have courage to stand up to fight for justice as we've been asking and they haven't been. They simply had to be still. For them to go out of their way uh, to not only f not fight for justice, but to block a jury who did their job for them uh, is appalling, and we ask that they drop it immediately. Uh, I also want to bring my colleagues' attention to uh, intro 1136. It's a body-worn camera reporting bill. It's being introduced with Councilmember Lanceman. It will require reporting on body camera usage and the footage captured disaggregated by many qualifiers and categories. As I said before, uh, having the footage is uh, one thing. Uh, it not leading to accountability it means that it's not doing its best use. And I feel like uh, the administration, NYPD, are releasing it uh, ad hoc, usually when it benefits them. We have to have a bigger discussion uh, very quickly on how we use this foot footage. Um, also, in July, I was arrested while protesting Brett Kavanaugh's nomination. On Monday, I was in court for that arrest as more allegations came out against him. Uh, I just want to align myself with those who are saying this man cannot be confirmed. Christine Blasey, Blasey Ford, Debbie Ramirez, and today, Julie Swetnick, People remember Anita Hill uh, back in the 1990s. To survivors of sexual assault, we see you, we hear you, we believe you, and I thank you for your bravery. As a straight, cisgendered male, I await my marching orders from my sisters and want to be the best ally that I can be. With that, hug Sameer to all those who are celebrating Sukkot. Councilmember Valander. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. I join Council Members Barron and Williams in urging the administration to drop the appeal in the case of Mohammed Ba. It really is um, galling. Uh, and I join Council Member Williams and so many others, including uh, the just extraordinary Adi Barkin, um, and being men who are standing with women at this time saying, enough. Um, uh, I also would like to call my colleagues' attention to the uh, Community School District 15 Middle School Integration Plan, 
uh, Councilmember Menchaca and I have been pushing for this for several years, and we could not have gotten there without the support of this body. Your support in moving forward the School Diversity Accountability Act, uh, uh, Councilmember Drum, when you chaired the Education Committee, doing a couple of hearings on this issue, Chair Traeger's support. Um, it's a really significant step. We are eliminating screens in all of the middle schools of District 15 and having a set aside 52% of the middle school students in our district um, are low income or English language learners and there will be a set aside in all of those schools for 52% of the kids. Um, it's a significant and very real step forward in our work to desegregate our schools. We have a long way to go. Uh, but this is the kind of bold action we have been uh, pushing for. The current system presents itself as a system of choice and meritocracy, but we've got to be honest, it functions as a system for hoarding privilege, and I'm proud that our district is leaning in together in a plan that was truly developed by Community School District 15 stakeholders, students, teachers, parents, educators, principals, and advocates uh, to make it happen. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Rose? Thank you, Thank you. Um, Madam Chair. Um, my colleagues, I hope you will join me in supporting two bills that are being introduced today. Um, intro 1131, um, which is in regards to the Waterfront Management Advisory Board, which the former Waterfront Committee worked really hard to establish. And, um, and proudly, you know, I announced that they convened their first meeting this week 1131 will amend the law which um, in respect to appointment of members to the Waterfront Management Advisory Board so that service on the community board will no longer preclude a New York City resident from also serving on the Waterfront Management Advisory Board. And intro 1132 will require the installation of reflective material on ballards, bollards, curbs, posts, and roundabouts um, and anything that sort of intrudes into the uh, roadbed. My hope is that by adding visual cues um, will prevent accidents at night, which um, these obstacles are harder to see. All of these bills in different ways impact the quality of life and how we engage in the city's civic life. And I hope that you will um, receive these bills um, in the spirit that they are put forth. Thank you. Thank you. And lastly, Councilmember Menchaca. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. I want to just echo all the sentiments that Councilmember Lander raised about CC15, an extraordinary moment for our community. And one of the things I want to lay out about that process was that it was a really uh, important process that was driven by the community. Uh, so many members that were non-English speakers were invited and brought in with real resources to engage them directly. I want to put your, uh, bring your attention to a bill that Councilmember Chin spoke to, 1116. This is known as the Comprehensive Street Vendor Bill. Uh, I'm really excited to be a co-prime sponsor with Chin, uh, joined by Lander and Rose, to really bring that comprehensive conversation that so many of you in this chamber spoke to. I, I look forward to working with you uh, as colleagues, but also bringing all the stakeholders this is a continuation of a long-term discussion here in the city, uh, and so much has to be, is to be gained from this opportunity that we have in front of us. And I know that shift, winds are shifting in support of this, and so I want to thank everyone who's making that possible. And finally, public charge has come down. Trump's proposed rules from the federal government target vulnerable immigrant families by penalizing them for being poor and hungry and sick. This is not a drill, ladies and gentlemen. This is another face of the deportation machine that will separate more families. Many families impacted our mixed status families with American-born children. By significantly expanding the list of public benefits that are grounds for denying green cards, this proposal rule forces m many families to choose between health and well-being and the ability for them to legally be here in the United States. This is wrong, and we have to stand up. I, as the chair of the Immigration Committee, uh, in joining with all of you and the speaker, will be bringing more information so that you can be ready to answer questions and join us in this effort to combat this incredibly cruel rule in front of us. Thank you so much. Thank you. And the speaker now to close. <clears throat>
Today's state of meeting of September 26, 2018 is hereby adjourned.